superheroes. Men and women with extraordinary abilities that have blessed our pages for almost a century. But what makes them so special? How have they held their place in the media for so long? Since June 1938, superheroes have dominated the world of comic books and have constantly been adapted for page and screen. But why? That year, the company Detective Comics, more commonly known as DC, took the initiative to create a character for the world to look up to, for the world to admire, and a character that stood for truth, justice, and the American way. The Man of Steel himself, Superman. Before this, comics were dominated by genres such as western and romance. But with an alien hero that could leap tall buildings in a single bound, fly, beat the strength of any mortal man, breathe ice and fire lasers from their eyes? Was it any wonder the superhero genre took off? But what led to the genre keeping its success? Well, three years after the success of The Man of Steel, a rival comic book company under the name of Timely Comics released their own American hero, but this time a hero from Earth who fought during the war. A hero under the name, Captain America. With the prominence of World War I and World War II, people needed someone to look up to. A means of hope and a means of escape. A world to escape to to feel that things would look up. For some, they escaped to the fictional world of Metropolis to watch mild-mannered Clark Kent become the Man of Steel while others wanted the realistic world of New York City and to watch Captain America punch Hitler in the face. But this still doesn't answer. Why are they still successful? Well, while those comics were defined by their ages, during this time, a man joined Timely Comics who would change the superhero genre as we know it today, the father of the modern comic book, Stan Lee. While Lee worked on the comics at the time and helped write them, he felt that something was missing. I really wanted to quit and try something else. And I remember Joan said to me, you know, Stan, if you want to quit, before you do, why don't you do one book the way you would like to do it? The worst that happens is Martin will fire you, and so what? You want to quit anyway. So coincidentally, at that time, he had found out that our competitor, DC Comics, which called itself National Comics in those days, they had done a book called The Justice League of America, a group of superheroes, and it was selling very well. And he said to me, Stan, why don't you do a book about a group of superheroes? So I figured this is my chance to do it my way. So I came up with something I called the Fantastic Four, about four superheroes. But instead of making them heroes who wore costumes, I figured I'm not gonna give them costumes. Because I always felt if I had a superpower, why would I want to put on a costume? First of all, I'm too much of a show off. I'd want everybody to know it's me. I would never wear a mask. <laughs> and why would I need a costume? If I could jump over a building, I don't have to wear a colorful costume, I'll just jump over the building. At any rate, I didn't give them costumes, and I tried to make them real characters living in the real world. His decision revolutionized comics forever with the creation of the Fantastic Four, the first superhero family. His life and the world of superheroes would change forever. For me as a child, uh, I knew who Stan Lee was. Uh, would read in the back of the comics, you know, Stan's letters and all that, and, or Stan's soapbox, whatever it was, I don't know and uh, always was fascinated by this, this, this artist that drew all these great characters. And then I discovered he wasn't an artist, he was a writer. And I'm like, what do you mean, a writer? He writes words? There's, there's guys that write words to these comics too? Lee then went on to create characters such as the Hulk, Thor, Iron Man, the Avengers, and the character that would change the world of superhero cinema, Spider-Man. Along with this, the company changed their name to Marvel Comics, a name that is revolutionary in the world of the superhero. This led to a friendly rivalry with DC who were then cranking out similar counterparts such as Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Cyborg, the Justice League and the character their company would take their name's inspiration from, Batman. With years of competition it was only some time before these characters took to the big screen. In 1978 and 1989 respectively 
DC gave their two biggest characters the cinematic treatment and brought to life the fictional worlds that Superman and Batman lived in. But in 2000 and 2002, Marvel took the X-Men and Spider-Man to the next level and showed what realistic worlds would look like if superheroes existed. From then on, each year has had multiple new superhero movie releases, which has led to the creation of new iterations of the characters. The genre's success on the screen has even been so prominent recently that as of August 2019, Avengers Endgame, the last film in Marvel's 10-year-long cinematic universe, has set the record for the highest grossing film of all time, grossing just shy of $2.8 billion. This has led to Marvel planning 12 more projects in their cinematic universe. Through the constant development of the genre, artists and other creative types have come forward to not only create their own approach to the characters, whether it be via art or recreating the costumes, but also with the creation of one of the largest nerd pop culture gatherings in the world, Comic-Con. I was lucky enough to be able to attend this year's MCM comic convention in London, to be able to see and meet with incredible superhero themed content creators and get their opinion on where the genre stands. Hi, I am Elle and I am currently cosplaying Red Hood. My name is Shannon and I'm cosplaying Akagi from Azure Lane. My name's Savannah and I'm actually cosplaying Spider-Gwen. I'm Jake and I'm cosplaying Negative Spider-Man from the PS4 game. Hi, I'm Jade I'm cosplaying Casual Black Cat. Uh, I recently, only recently got into the superhero genre, um, beforehand I was much more of a fantasy kind of person. Um, I guess the influence it's had on me is that it's more relatable, they're real people in a sense. Yes, they've got these fantastic abilities, but you know, they're kind of much more relatable for me. Uh, when I was a kid I was bullied a lot and Marvel Comics helped distract me from the real world, so... I just love superheroes, I think they're just awesome. Like you get ones that don't have powers, you get ones that are born with, I just love it. I love everything. It's a form of female empowerment. If you think of Gwen Stacy in the Ultimate Universe, which is this character, if you think of Storm, for example, from the X-Men series, like, it shows how women can rise up from the ashes, can actually combat whatever they're going through, and then fight for the world. So, as I was quite young, growing up, Iron Man was one of the first superhero films I watched when I was about 10. So it's been a massive impact on my life from a really young age, and especially having a, a very nerdy father, it kind of becomes part of who you are. <laughs> Absolutely not. There will always be something, whatever it may be. It's been from the early age, even though Endgame's over, there will still be something to take its place. Not necessarily to be better, Endgame was amazing, but I don't think it'll die out with Endgame. There's definitely more to come. Ridiculous. I'd, yeah, I'd say it's a lie. Marvel Ridiculous. just got X-Men, Fantastic Four and all that, so we've got a whole multiverse to choose from now. Everything you said, I agree with. I don't think it's ever going to die out, really, no, not at all. I would say it's not quite correct. Um, I would say that it will probably slow down for a little bit, but definitely won't stop altogether. <laughs> definitely won't stop altogether. Absolutely not. It's, it's one of those things that's going to continue on and on, like Star Wars did, it's gone on for years now. Superheroes and the Marvel Universe, it will continue. It's going to be strong, it's going to be powerful and it will always give that image of empowerment to people as well. But the genre isn't without its downfalls. The costumes, I mean, they're not bright and funky and colourful like they are in the comics. They're not interesting enough. A lot of people nowadays, they want to see more relatable like LGBTQ. They want to see a lot more of um, the underdog playing up. And if, if they can achieve that, they've literally hit an absolute gold mine slightly more diverse characters moving forward. So obviously originally as it first came out there's been different social issues throughout kind of society and how society has progressed over the years. I think it will become more diverse, different characters, different abilities. So I think it will be a lot more varied than it is. A lot of the storylines lately have been very, he's going to, yeah, predict. With the interviewees' different inputs on the positives and negatives of the genre, the interview came full circle, leading to the question that inspired this documentary. Uh, yeah. Um, technically not really, because of course we've had 11 years of this, but 
there's always going to be a place for them. People are always going to want to see, you know, their favourite superheroes kicking butt. It's just going to happen all the time. Absolutely. I have a very young cousin who started to actually create his own comic books and I'm bringing him to his first MCM in October. So I can tell from the next generation that it's going to have a huge impact. He absolutely adores Stan Lee. He loves reading comic books, so it'll never die out, I don't think. Yes. yes. Kids growing up are going to love it. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, people always look for a hero, no matter if you're the underdog, no matter if you're already in the best place you possibly be. You will always want to be a hero, and you'll always want to see a hero. Therefore, it will always exist. So whether you want to represent an iconic character, let your inner villain out, show your creative side, or just enjoy yourself, this genre is the way to do it. These incredible content creators show that the genre is still going strong, but you've heard our perspectives, so I leave the question to you. Is there still a place for the genre in the 21st century?